Well, good morning. Um, a few just uh, brief announcements. First of all, if you are joining me online, uh, my apologies for starting a little late and my apologies to those who gathered. I thought we would give it a shot. It said 0% chance of rain on my weather bug. It was not being truthful to me this morning. So anyway, thanks for bearing with us and welcome to the, the faithful. I know who the really hardy people are. Uh, so we, um, a few announcements. First of all, uh, special welcome to anyone joining us online uh, for the hymns and stuff. Uh, if you have an ELW, grab that. If not, uh, Philip is gracious enough usually to put the words there right on for the singing. So sing along at home and uh, hope you'll do that. Uh, next Saturday, uh, we are having our spring cleaning here at church for the outside. Um, so, uh, Dan Diffendaffer asked if you are able to come and help out between 9 and noon. We have uh, a lot of lawn work to do. Don Wardala does a beautiful job keeping our grounds kind of uh, good and safe, but uh, we need to now do the stuff that we don't pay him to do and uh, go from there. So, again, next Saturday, 9 to noon. Yeah. Becky and Zach and I attended our Synod Assembly, um, and uh, that was uh, Friday and Saturday, and we'll have a report uh, next week via video during worship, but if you join us for, for uh, uh, Adult Forum at 11, uh, we are going to have some things on uh, reparations that they're talking about, um, some different uh, a report that Zach uh, will give for, uh, for us and Becky uh, during, during the adult forum time. So join us then. We had to move the natives adult forum back a week because uh, she had a, a family situation come up. Our presenter did. So that will be next week. And then in two weeks, Denise, uh, Denise, will, Denise Wendt will be talking about uh, food for Lane County. So, and then we will wrap up for our adult forums for the season. So that's 11 o'clock the next three weeks. Hope you can join us at that time. Um, Linda is on vacation this week. So uh, if you don't get me right away, I will be checking messages um, but, and I should be around, but uh, always make sure you know that you can call me on my cell phone number. That's always the best and most direct way to get a hold of me. Um, let's see, what else do I have? Just a couple notes uh, for people in the congregation. First of all, I had a beautiful conversation with Joanne Galsvig. She's really tickled to know that we still remember her and she's, you know, at, continues at home uh, in hospice care and she has good days and bad days. And um, so just uh, keep her in your prayers uh, in this journey that she is taking uh, she's just uh, one of those people that when we hear in our scripture today, Jesus says, abide with me as I abide in you. Joanne is one who really gets that and gets that in a very special way. So Joanne, thinking about you. Also, um, Eunice, Eunice's husband uh, took a turn. Um, he's uh, at, uh, their, let's see, in the same facility that they live in. I'm forgetting. Where do you live, Jim? Cascade Manor, thank you. Cascade Manor um, in the care uh, end of things, the uh, assisted living care. Uh, and um, he has said that, that he has taken his journey. And so he is starting, stopping comfort care measures. And uh, we pray for Eunice. Uh, all six of Chuck's sons, or children, excuse me, are in town and um, with him. So prayers for Eunice uh, in the midst of this. Let's see, uh, just one more reminder, May 23rd is Pentecost. Not only should you wear red, but you should bring food. We'll be figuring it out. Uh, I'll be talking to Sally and Jennifer, thinking about whether we just stay here and have our food here, or if we want to go to the park. We'll figure it out, but plan on sticking around after worship. Hopefully, the weather will be nicer than it is today. So, all right. Are there any other announcements for the good of the community? Sunday school is done virtually today at noon. Virtual Sunday school at noon today. Oh yes, thank you. Book club is also meeting at 1230. 
Um, and they are on separate uh, Facebook links. So just know book club is per usual. And Crystal sent out a special one for Sunday school. So if you go to the usual Sunday school one, you're going to be a part of book club. Just know that as well. All right. Without any other announcements, we continue with the singing of Child of the Water. It's printed in the bulletin. And also you'll see words scrolling for those who are at, are at home. You're a child of the water, child of the word, guided by promise and stories you've heard. God of the wounded knows you by name and carries you home every day. From your first breath to the last step, all of the dance. Down deep in your laughter, whatever your fears, try to remember. You're a child of the water, child of the word, guided by promise and stories you've heard. God of the wounded knows you by name and carries you home every day. Life is a gift, time carries on, and you will grow. Amidst your believing and throughout your doubt, something is sure. You're a child of the water, child of the word, guided by promise and stories you've heard. God of the wounded knows you by name and carries you home every day. We journey together as children of God, sealed by the cross. You're a child of the water, child of the word, guided by promise and stories you've heard. God of the wounded knows you by name and carries you home every day. Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
not live. Nourish our life in his resurrection, that we may bear the fruit of love and know the fullness of your joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. If I stand here, I think I'm good. Hey, children, we're going to do the children's message time. Can I get your attention real quick? Fabulous. You stay there. Wonderful. Good morning to all our children at home. I think we're over here. I'm going to look at this camera. I hope you are having a great day. I want to I wanna tell you and ask you a couple questions. I have, a, I have a story and some questions. Have you ever experienced mom and dad leaving to go on a long trip yeah i when i was a kid i remember they would go on trips i had a dad who'd go on a business trip every now and then i want you to think about what hey thatcher oliver thank you i want you to think about what made it a little easier to go on a trip or for them to leave and go on a trip hey charlotte when mom or dad goes on a trip what makes it easier When they leave, when, well, is it hard when mom and dad leave to go on a trip? Do you worry about that? Not really. Oh, apparently Charlotte doesn't worry about when I go on a trip, guys. <laughs> Not super sensitive. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go skip forward to my story, guys. <laughs> you ha uh, do you worry about it, Paige? Yeah. Okay. What well, makes it easier? Reading makes it easier? Okay, I want to tell you what made it easier for me. Okay, so here's the deal. Uh, my parents would go on trips, and they would call me when I went on the trips. But, and when I talked to them, that made it easier. And when I became a grown-up and left my kiddos at home, I called them, and that makes it easier for me. Maybe it doesn't make it easier for them, but it makes it easier for me. <laughs> um... But every once in a while, my parents would go on this really, really long camping trip, and there would be no phones. And that would be super hard. Should I look at that camera? Are we okay? I think I'm okay. Okay, guys. <laughs> Stick with me. All right. So they'd leave on a trip. I would be really stressed out about it. I'd cry. They wouldn't call. It would be really rough. So in our gospel reading today, Jesus is telling his disciples he's going to go on a trip. He's going to go, he's, what's going to happen is he's going to go see God. He says he's going to go to his father's house, and he's going to leave the disciples. And the disciples, Thatcher, the disciples are really stressed. Can you show me a stressed face, please? I'm really stressed. The disciples are super stressed. <laughs> Thatcher, what do you think Jesus does to help the disciples when he's going to go on his trip? Tells them it's okay. He does tell them it's okay, and they don't believe him. They, they go, but we don't know how to follow you. We don't know where you're going. Maybe if you could show us a map. Maybe if you could show us God. And so what Jesus does is he gives them a telephone number. Do you all know a telephone number? Think of a telephone number you know. This is a big question I know in this day and age. You just push a button and it calls. You might know a telephone number. I know a couple from my childhood, which was my parents. Jesus says, if you pray in my name, God's going to hear you. I'm going to hear you. Guys, can we call God right now? Ready? Let's call God. Ready, everybody? Get ready. Dear Lord. Let me hear it. Dear Lord. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> For listening to us and hearing us. And being there when we need you. Ready? Here's, here's the telephone. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm going to give this to you. Your mic wasn't working. Yeah, I Our first reading this morning is from Acts chapter 8, verses 26 through 40. Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, 
Get up and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of scripture that he was reading was this, like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter and like a lamb silent before its shearer, he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this? about himself or about someone else. Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus. And as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all of the towns until he came to Caesarea. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for today is Psalm 22, and the refrain, I invite you to say it with me and then sing with me as you catch on to the tune. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. From you comes my praise in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the sight of those who fear the Lord. The poor shall eat and be satisfied, that those who seek the Lord give praise. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of nations shall bow before God. For dominion belongs to the Lord, who rules over the nations. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. Indeed, all who sleep in the earth shall bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust, though they be dead, shall kneel before the Lord. Their descendants shall serve the Lord, whom shall proclaim in generations to come. They shall proclaim God's deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying to them, the Lord has acted. All the ends of the earth shall remember 
and turn to the Lord. John chapter 4, verses 7 through 21. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loves us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. By this, we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the father has sent his son as the savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this way, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars, for those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from his, him is this, those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 15th chapter. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my word abides in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Just a side note, this whole business of abiding, 
of remaining with one another. I just want to thank all those who are helping with the tech and with Crystal and for everyone that is just bearing with all this and walking together in the midst of this journey. Pastor Eric, being from Minnesota, sometimes I uh, am a little too bold maybe with my weather predictions, but we'll go from there. And uh, thank you for bearing with me on the sound, for getting to turn my mic on, different things. So... Jesus says to us today, whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. Seems a little startling, doesn't it? But I think there's something else really happening here. In the midst of everything that is going on, I wonder how many of you are feeling a bit pruned lately. No, I'm not asking if you like prunes, but for those master gardeners that are with us, I know that pruning happens in different stages. And that pruning is casting away the old or that which is not going to help the rest of the plant bear a lot of fruit. So for you, if you are feeling pruned, that is stripped of the many things that you have built up to protect you from mistakes made, unwelcome challenges cast, situations posed that disturb your worldview, those things that cast into doubt all that holds you to be true. Are you feeling pruned? After all, we do want a world where the bad guys or women or girls or all that is bad are caught. The disease always gets cured. Goodness always prevails. And right and wrong is always clearly understood. And all that is left is a clear and loving word from our God. But that's not the world we live in, is it? It's never been our world in the past. And if we're honest, the future really doesn't look that much more promising. Come, Lord Jesus, we might pray. Wouldn't it be nice if we could be pruned in such a way that we would always bear the fruit that God intended? I mean, we would say the things we were meant to say at just the right time. Do things in life that we were meant to do. Understand our calling in a perfect manner. We'd have all the answers we were meant to have to share with our children and our grandchildren. But instead, the pruning that we feel often makes us feel stripped bare. And through it all, we still wonder what we're supposed to be doing. Everyone feels that way from time to time. I know. When it all gets stripped away, the question comes, who will be there to hold you? The words of Scripture, I want to set a little background. We are in what is known as the Farewell Address, Crystal hit it well in the beautiful job of trying to manage a children's sermon in these conditions. But thinking about when people go away, Jesus is talking to his disciples because he knows things are about to change. Jesus is saying goodbye, and Jesus is on the way to the cross. Jesus also understands that his disciples, as he leaves them, are going to have their own crosses to bear when he is gone. His disciples and followers are on a path where they will soon be kicked out of the synagogue. And Jesus understands that their future will not be the same. The future has never been easy for Jesus' followers. 
After all, Jesus understands that every time there is a goodbye, something changes. My wife Katie and I have said good to buy, goodbye in a manner of speaking to all five of our children from time to time. Three of them are in college now. They come and go. Sometimes they come back and leave again. But I know each time I have said goodbye to one of them, whether it is in college or a different life circumstance, something has changed. It changes in me, and I know it changes in them. At least I think it does. Because I also remember the times when I would be leaving my parents who lived in Minnesota whether I was going back to college or going back to Washington State, always, every time, something seemed to be lost when I would say goodbye. Through those goodbyes, we understand that life is never quite the same again. I've shared with you before the whole process of a Midwest goodbye you know, that goes on and on and on. For my parents, I know when they were saying goodbye to me, my dad actually became very intentional. He would say a prayer for me, a prayer that I would remember the lessons I had been taught, that I would know that though there was a distance of space, we would continue to remain close. He wanted me to understand that part of life is separation. But when done well, a goodbye can center us for whatever is to come next. It's never an easy thing to say goodbye to someone you love. But Jesus is preparing his disciples for the withering and then the pruning that is bound to take place. He's just speaking to the reality that is there. Part of us dies when we say goodbye. But Jesus has something to say about this business. Often I've heard the emphasis put on the idea of having part, if not all of us, cast into the fire as if it was supposed to be some sort of fear thing. As if Jesus is saying, abide in me or else. But as I read... Through this gospel, I could say that interpretation is so very, very wrong. I think Jesus is very emotional as he is saying goodbye to his disciples and knows he is going to the cross. And Jesus understands that the crosses his followers will face won't be easy. And he wants them to know that through it all, he will continue to be present. He will continue to abide. He will send his spirit to them. And we are invited to have our sense of being remain in Jesus as well. Jesus' words this morning are meant to be words of comfort. Abide in me as I abide in you. When everything around you seems out of control, return to your center and then take your next step. There have been countless voices over the centuries that argue that the cross is really supposed to be some kind of mechanism by which God finds a way to forgive us despite how wretched we are. I want to be honest about something. I really don't find that perspective ultimately very helpful. As if we need one more thing to remind us of how imperfect we are. If the cross means anything, I think it means that God chose not to sit back in heaven, removed from the pain and problems of our mortal, free, and difficult life in this world, but rather came in Christ to be joined to it, to the ups and the downs, 
the hopes and the disappointments, the frailties and faults of our life in this world, so that we would know of God's unending commitment to us. The cross was really not an instrument that made it possible for God to love us. Rather, it's a testimony to just how much God already loved us and God's promise to be with us through all things. Just so, the resurrection is the promise that no matter how much tragedy we endure, these hardships will not have the last word. Can we remember this, siblings in Christ? In the midst of of all our hellos and our goodbyes. In the midst of a world that wants to say, if we are not in agreement, we can't get along. In the midst of a world, a people, a church that knows struggle, can we remember where we are to remain? In the midst of when you can, all you can see is goodbye. Remember where it is you abide and who abides in you. Think for a second where you are abiding, where you are putting your trust, your hope, and your dreams. Jesus says, just as I abide with you, promise, a hundred percent promise. So may you abide in me. Invitation. It's a 100% invitation to see that we, as we abide in one another, we are really abiding in Jesus. May God bless you on this journey. Whatever weather may come our way, whatever hellos and goodbyes you have to say, whatever grief you have to go through, Jesus goes to the cross, not to take that all away, but to enter into those struggles with us. The bell has just rung, and that means my sermon needs to end. Blessings to you all. Amen. Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my name be known? Will you let my life be grown in you and you in me? Will you leave? yourself behind if I but call your name? Will you care for cruel and kind and never be the same? Will you risk the hostile stare should your life attract or scare? Will you let me answer prayer in you and you in Will you let the blinded see if I but call your name? Will you set the prisoners free and never be the same? Will you kiss the leper clean and do such as this unseen and admit to what I mean in you and you in me? Will you love the you? hide if I but call your name? Will you quell the fear inside and never be the same? Will you use the faith you found to reshape the world around through my sight and touch and sound in you and you in Lord, your summons echoes true when you but call my name. Let me turn and follow you and never be 
the same. In your company I'll go, where your love and footsteps show. Thus I'll move and live and grow in you and you in me. Believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. Believe in one. We son him. It's got to be right up here. Light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Father through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. God of all fruitfulness, you abide in your church, and your church abides in you. Cleanse us by your word, and give yourself to the whole church on earth, so that it bears fruit and witness to your love. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You have created the heavens and the earth. As we wonder at the beauty of creation, May we seek vital connections among all that depends on the earth for life. Guide the ministries of earth keepers, friends of Buford Park, and the Long Tom watershed. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You rule the nations with justice and love. Give the leaders of the earth assurance of your abiding, abiding presence that they lead not by fear, but with love for those they are called to serve. Especially open the hearts of President Biden, President Putin, President Felix, oh, sure. read that yourself. The president of Congo, thank you, Eric. Hear us, oh God, your mercy is great. You have loved us so that we can love others. We pray for all in need of your love, those who are poor, lowly, outcast, weak, or fearful. Provide for the needs of all. For who and what else do God's people pray today? We pray for the people of India. We pray for all the children in our lives. We pray for the people of Brazil, for my neighbor Penny and my niece Andrea. We pray for my dear friend Amber who has been fighting cancer and is beginning a new treatment. 
We pray for the recovery of Carol and Ravi. We pray for Danley, who is recovering from spine surgery. We pray for Dan's sister, who has had a terrible accident this week and is recovering uh, from two surgeries. We pray for Joanne Goldsvig. Whoa, just let me look at my ballot. We pray for Eunice Carr's husband, Chuck, who is recovering. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. For what do God's people give thanks this day? For flexible people. <laughs> For rain. For first responders and all who serve in our military services. Amen. For our teachers and all their hard work they are doing. We pray for the doctors and the nurses, for, for my brother who got his first shot. We pray for the rain, for Grandma Ra Roberta and her safe travels to Eugene, for Pastor Eric's sermon, for the many birds who use our bird bath, For Damon's new job as a vocational arts teacher at Thurston High School starting tomorrow. Yay! <laughs> Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, mercy is great. You gather us with all the saints by the power of your spirit. With them, may our hearts live forever in your keeping. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share a sign of that peace through distance, love, or at home, embracing one another in some manner. God's peace to you all. God's peace, tech team. God's peace, Wendy, Brian, Crystal. God's peace.
and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide right, with us yes. and send us in service to a suffering world for the sake, sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and good that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and ever living God. But chiefly we are bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of our Lord. For he is the true Passover lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who by his death has destroyed death and by his rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Our Lord Jesus, in the night in which he is betrayed, took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for them all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gifts of his body and blood 
May they strengthen, keep, and unite us now and forever. Amen. 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 God grants you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus, the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia! Alleluia. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Alleluia. Alleluia.